<laughs> Let's transition because something else happened last week and um, that was the decision on the GMO products. The court say that indeed they find no tangible basis to uh, vacate that uh, decision by the cabinet to allow importation of GMO products into the country. And of course, <coughs> excuse me, this came into effect October last year. The cabinet at that time <coughs> approved importation and cultivation of GMO foods on Kenyan farms. So now it appears like um, the country can go ahead and adopt this. Um, does it affect how we do things, um, Honorable Andeto? Because there's been this talk about um, subsidized fertilizer. There's a bumper harvest already, uh, as reported by government forces. We've not be been able to establish from the actual harvest. But what does it do to especially our yields and what Kenyans have been used to in terms of cultivation uh, methods and practices? Uh, some GMO technology promises uh, some very, very positive things in terms of um, uh, food production and in terms of overall uh, agricultural uh, productivity. Um, uh, as you know, GMO is actually about dealing with things like pest resistance, uh, drought resistance, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in an era of, of climate change uh, that we are dealing with, anything that we can be able to do um, to basically improve our yields uh, will go a long way. For me, the issue about GMO has been, obviously, like any other new technology, it's something that uh, we have to work very hard to bring our people along. The reason why it's a big conversation mm -hmm. is because there is a lot of meat, there's a lot of food, there's a lot of lies, there's a lot of half-truths you know, that surrounds it. And how do we um, bring our people uh, uh, you know, along this journey so that they can be able to, to understand? Have we done a very good job at that? I think we need to spend more time, uh, uh, you know, some inviting uh, experts, and maybe we may not necessarily ourselves here be experts in GMO and the technicalities of GMO, <coughs> but how do we get more experts to, 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 to tell Kenyans and to remove all these maids that I don't know when we eat GMO maize, we're going to grow horns, you know, uh, when we do this, we're going to, you know, we're going to have cancer and things like that. Mm. GMO is not new in the world. It's been practiced in, in, the, in the West for 10, 20 years. Um, uh, you know, we have things like um, uh, even uh, genetically modified, uh, uh, I don't know, pigs that are now being used to produce insulin, which is good for, uh, which is being used to control diabetes. So it's, it's a technology that promises very good things. But like anything new, we need to take time to explain to our people. You saw the other day, uh, you know, the fear that people had when they saw some strange devices at, at uh, you know, at, uh, at, at KICC, which was scanning people's eyes. Anytime we have something that is new, let us bring our people along. So I challenge the media this morning, let us um, educate our people and not just sensationalize educate our people because GMO promises are very, very, um, you know, strong, uh, you know, promise in terms of us improving our food security mm. in the growing phase of our climate change. Honorable Boss, part of the conversation about uh, food security has been where do you get the seeds from? How do you cultivate? What farm inputs do you use? And of course, the amount of yields. You come from a very rich <coughs> county in terms of um, agriculture. What does it do? What does this do, this decision do to the farmers there and knowing that we currently don't have sufficient um, GMO seeds. In fact, we may have to import again, as you're saying, import. Um, okay, just first of all, what is important to make clear to the public mm -hmm. is that, uh, and I, I'm lucky that I sat through a presentation by Professor Richard Odwar, mm -hmm. who is a, a professor at Kenyatta University, where they have actually been doing research for many years uh, about on GMO. And they have, in fact, successfully produced seed mm -hmm. for other countries that are now benefit, reaping the benefit of GMO seeds. One is that we know that the challenges we are having that's bringing the cost of living high mm. and is also causing uh, issues of food insecurity is because of crop failure. Why do our crops fail? Because we may find that today we are hiring the armyworms is attacking our crop, the locusts are attacking our crop, and all sorts of other fungal diseases and so on. And all GMO does is pick a gene from another same plant or a different plant that has resistance to that particular uh, insect. So that the seed we produce, mm -hmm. we can now grow crops that are resistant to drought and 
and uh, those type of uh, pests. Mm -hmm. So basically, GMO is it's not that it's not uh, it's not something different from a similar it's a, from a similar plant. But because there has been uh, almost a narrative, almost a conspiracy across the world uh, to ensure that we, again, in the global south, and I believe in this, that do not make progress in regards to food security. Remember, when initially to improve food production, they, were, they started using tractors and equipment and so on, and they developed and were able to produce more food. When they wanted to, to develop, they used coal, which was even from Africa, in order to create, a, to generate electricity and, and, and have uh, steam engines, you know, from turbines that they used coal and so on. They developed. When it's our turn to develop, they tell us coal is bad for you. When it is our turn, uh, then they use GMO seeds to be able to make sure that they have abundance of food. Today, America have excess of food, they throw it. And sometimes they bring it to us when we are starving. Then they tell us, no, 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 no. GMO is now bad for you. Uh, you can't do it. Every time it's, it's our chance to reap the benefits of a specific Even science. That. Sorry, if you look at the narrative, you just have to look at the international narrative that went on. Anyway, and this narrative has come until it has infiltrated among our people. So if you look at the GMO debate, there is no less than eight cases one by Paul Mwangi, another one for Kenya Peasants League, another one by Paul Mwangi again, another one by Ali Saif, another one by Law Society again, again uh, Paul Mwangi and the Kenya Peasants. All of them refuse, uh, uh, objecting to the use of GM GMO in Kenya. Yet, and their argument is that we don't have enough safeguards to protect us from if there are any bad effects on, uh, on GMO. Yet, we have a very uh, strong regulatory system in Kenya. We have the National Regulator, we have the Biosafety Act, we have the Biosafety Environmental Release Regulations, we have KFIS, we have DPH, we have DVS, I mean, Dep uh, Department Directorate of Veterinary Services, we have NEMA, we have Kenya Wildlife Service, we have the Kenya Industrial Property Industry, we have the Pesticides Control, and so on. We have all these to be able to safeguard us. So to be able to just go to court and say, stop that, let people continue starving, and let our crop continue failing, just because uh, you, you are making an allegation that you can't substantiate. Yet, in Kenya, we have so many mm. approved GMO labs. We have the one that is at Kenyatta University, which is funded from, from Parliament every year. Okay. There is the Biosciences uh, uh, Africa, which is uh, for Eastern, uh, it's called Biosciences Sciences Eastern and Central Africa. We have ISIPE. We have the Kenya Agricultural Livestock Research Organization. All these are undertaking work relating to GMO. So, and in so, fact, so, so, uh, it has course. successfully tell it has this. successfully produced seed for Ethiopia, for Zambia, and for other countries. They are benefiting from it, yet we have not been able to do that. They have done uh, seeds, they've already done seed again, funded by government for maize, sweet potato, cassava, groundnut, sorghum, rice, tomato, and uh, pigeon peas. So despite the fact tell, that... Tell me this, I hear you, Honorable Boss, tell me this, because the narrative has been that uh, because of the subsidized fertilizer, the harvest of maize is going up from 40 million, which is the national demand, mm -hmm. we estimate, to 60 million bags. Yes. Without a GMO seed, that's subsidized fertilizer. Yes. What is our problem? Is it the seeds? Is it the irrigation? Is it... Mm -hmm what to use as some inputs? There are several reasons that we have challenges. One is that the, co the cost of inputs was high. That has been dealt with subsidizing fertilizer in a, in a, in a part way. Mm. But also, we have crop failure. You might have heard that there is army worm attack around the Transoya and the mm. Wasingishu area. That is going to, it co we are not getting at the optimum that we should because uh, of those challenges. You know that we are going to have El Nino, which is going to cause floods, and, uh, and, and then after thereafter, followed by severe drought, which again will pro affect our production. We are saying deal with it two ways. One is mitigate climate change uh, so that we can mitigate drought and, and floods and so on. But also, let us mitigate losses through diseases that affects the crop, so that we are able to maximize our production. Because yes, we have increased over 200,000 hectares or acres, I can't remember if it's hectares or acres, 
of a land that has been tilled to plant maize. But some of it will be affected by disease. Another point that has been noted is that storage. That's why the so, Ministry of Agriculture uh, mm. came to Parliament to ask for resources to buy dryers across the country in a places that are nearby the small share, the small holder farmers, so that we also don't get uh, post-harvest losses. So, so again, you must not only produce, but you must protect, protect. what you have produced. Okay. I, I am no expert, but GMO maize would not be attacked by GMO worms. Sorry? J yes, you find that uh, usually the genetically modified seed is to protect if a, if a, if a certain uh, crop is normally affected by certain pesticides, I mean pests, then what you do is you uh, put a gene put on it. Put in some poison. Put in a gene <laughs> the from uh, <laughs> put, in, put in a gene from another plant that is resistant to that pest. Okay. Then it will be able to deal with all right, it. All right. All right. Uh, and, and let me explain something. Genetically modified means you keep acclimatizing on depending on your environment. You'll keep so even you, uh, Manu, us, uh, Aman, you, are, you genetically are modified. Genetically modified. Because <laughs> you're no longer walking on your phone. No, you are, you are, we are pedaling falsehoods here. Sam, let me listen to Horabo yeah, here. Just to add this. You yeah. see, the biggest uh, uh, fallacy for us Mm. Uh, sometimes we, we, we take a joke and we forget. Uh, when we, we, we allow uh, different uh, fast uh, foods to be brought into the, the country, GMO. and uh, we are saying they have not been touched by worms, uh, that is why you cannot take our waru, that is not why you cannot do this. And the vegetable so, is clean. The vegetable is clean. What is that coming in the country? Already our kids are eating it in all these fast Every foods day. because we've allowed it and to And when we travel abroad. And when you travel abroad. When Manyora travels eat? abroad, he eats And how, how come in Europe, have where we have, he doesn't have uh, three, <laughs> four climates, mm. that you can survive in two, three months, you're able to do a bamba harvest and keep before winter comes in? What is that crop that cannot uh, be planted where the equator passes and, and survives? And genetic yeah. modification has helped so us the, the, produce insulin as, as a country, and COVID mm. vaccines. We must ask ourselves, where are we as a country? And why have we allowed to import in rice, to import in all these things that are on the shelf? All of them are genetic. And they're illegally because. Well, whether they, well, whether, whether they are illegally, but we have allowed them in and we are buying them. And we the find cereal fantastic rices the uh, and cereal. we are just buying them and imported cereals and imported sweet corn and imported grapes and imported, grapes Even popcorn and imported everything. It's dangerous. So uh, it, it started <laughs> dangerous long before. It mm. is time we have to agree it is in the country. We must deal with it and we must put in policies now okay. and to is still make alive. sure Some. we take care of it. So, All right. So, Haman, yeah. the conversation has also been about the sovereignty of uh, agricultural sector because there has been the perception that if this now becomes uh, the law or what is being done, then it means we may have to always depend on uh, some seed manufacturers. What must we do? If this is to be clear, what must we do to ensure that we're not, um, we don't have to bow uh, to the external world like we are doing with our importation of fuel? just because we need some maize to plant, because at that time we no longer have the organic. Once this is cleared, the uh, way is clear for GM, there's nothing you'll do. You'll have to source seeds from those um, uh, multinational seed companies. Certainly, we don't want to mention them here, they may sue us, but they, 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 you will have no option. But Kenyatta uh, has- Listen, that, that, that's just talk. Uh, that what? is not, it's not industrial production. It's not even Kenyatta, Joma Kenyatta. Stick what? It is, it is, it is not industrial. And the, the politics of this whole thing is that finally you'll have to get from those big uh, uh, companies that produce seed. Uh, but let me respond to this very dangerous talk here. Sam, cancer is a big killer today in the world. Diabetes, blood pressure, uh, and other lifestyle diseases are wiping out people in the world. <laughs> It's a known fact today, it's an accepted fact with scientific <coughs> evidence and all that. Mm -hmm. And medical experts agree that these are linked to what we eat and our lifestyles, especially what we eat. Now, that is why the discussion around GMO has been met with a lot of caution. And that's why 29 countries, some of them 
19 from EU, France, Germany, you know, big countries have banned GMO, China, and 60 others have restrictions on GMO because they understand the problem today with the disease in the world is linked to lifestyles and what we eat. Why do you think more successful countries are apprehensive about GMOs? Mm. And in those countries like America, which allow GMOs some, mm -hmm. they are very clear about certain things. If you go to a supermarket, it's very clear. This is GMO, this is not GMO. If you are planting seed, you know, where do you plant GMO? Where, which zone is not allowed? And when you are in that zone, you, that crop, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the cross pollination is not allowed. There's a lot of scientific intervention right. put in place for GMOs. Now, this is Kenya, my friend. This is your country, you know it. We've been talking about the dollar. And the reason why the dollar is where it is, ask yourself, which countries have useless currencies? They are countries with useless democracy, with the dictatorships, countries where people still left, right. There is a big match between, corresponding between countries that have no democracy, countries that still, as, as, a, as a pastime, and, and their currencies, and the value of their currencies. The same with, when you are talking about bang, mm. Tingisha Miti, Wajakoya. <laughs> countries that would allow bang, like Zimbabwe, for example, they are very clear about where you, you, you utapanda bang yako. Bring it in Kenya here. You can't control. So why don't we know ourselves and say, look here, there's a discussion around the safety of GMOs. Okay. As a country, <clears throat> do we believe we have the capacity to police GMOs? My honest answer is we don't have. And you ask that question. We've been doing 40 bags, million bags. We are told it's 60. 60 will even include animal feed, and therefore we not even need yellow maize. Let me tell you this, Sam. Gladys Bosch comes from the grain basket of this country. She knows, and she has mentioned a few of those things. There are just a few interventions which if government put in place, we would move from 40 bags to almost 40 million to almost 70, 80. Including a very simple thing like marketing. How does it work? When farmers harvest their crop where she comes from, government pretends they don't know they have harvested. Then the middlemen go in and buy this maize for a song. You get it? What, the, what happens? By the time government comes in, farmers have disposed of their crop because in those areas, everything comes from maize. School fees, Christmas, everything. So people will sell. What happens? A person who did 20 acres this year certainly will not even do 15 next year because of marketing. Just one intervention, one. And the others she has mentioned, including crop loss. If we were to just enter into farming with the serious it deserves, including, for example, even before we do GMO, what stops government from giving Kenyans free seed? Free seed from universities, Carlo, Kenya seed, and our universities. Free seed, how much will it cost in billions? Will it even be 10 billion? No, free. In the absence of free seed, we have all manner of seeds. Ask her. Sometimes crops fail merely because of the horrible fertilizer they have used. And many times because of the seed. If government just provided seed, which means it will all be from government and there will be no private seed. Now we are going to GMO, I pity this country. Okay. I just Some hope leaders like this We are like not saying we are going. I just yeah. hope this can We are saying. It's an option. Let me, let me just finish. Let me no, just finish. Just I was finishing because of you. Mm. I'm seated with leaders in this country. And I've always said this. If you are a member of, can, of parliament, you must know you are among the top 1,000 people whose decisions today will affect this country 200 years to come. An MP is a very serious person. Sometimes these MPs don't know. So when you talk loosely about GMO, parliament should enlighten itself about this GMO thing and ask itself, how come 19 EU countries have banned GMO? How come China has banned GMO? How come there are serious restrictions in America? How come it is destroyed biodiversity in Mexico? They should equip themselves because their decisions will affect 
the court said the future Kenyans of this country. need to trust the institutions. Pardon? Exactly. The court I, said Kenyans need to trust the institutions. And but, we but have no less than six, be ten institutions. They should, they should know what they are talking but, about. But you see, Sam, uh, uh, yes, what I, I wanted to tell Prof, uh. we are saying, as you tell us all that, we allowed it to come in this country. That is why cancer is high. That is why everything is high. So this is the now of sugar is high. <laughs> what we should be doing as a country is accepting and now getting into understanding how do you do it better? How do you caution people? How do, are you able to ensure health-wise mm. Kenyans can now have a better health than just keeping quiet and every day saying there wouldn't be GMO and you have allowed it to come into fast foods, you have allowed it all over and that's why Kenyans are dying of cancer. And some may allow me to say this, yep. at the moment as we speak, there is no scientific empirical evidence that GMO causes cancer as we speak. We and that, I can say it, say it fear of, without fear of contradiction. It, yeah. Let me finish, Mr. Mm -hmm. Manyora. Now, uh, but yet, there are things that we have empirical evidence. For example, that certain pesticides, 226 types of pesticides that is brought into this country has been confirmed to cause cancer. Mm -hmm. In fact, farmers in the US were paid over 250 million US dollars a piece more than 20 years ago for developing cancer on account of using the pesticides. The same pesticides are being manufactured in Europe and America and imported and into, it Kenya into Kenya and used but not used in their own country. And yet, the same law society, the same Paul Mwangi, the same Peasants League have not gone to court against the pest control products board who are allowing this into the country. Then we go on about GMO where there is no empirical evidence, yet there is empirical evidence on things like pesticides. Let me tell you, Mr. Manyora, today the insulin that is used in all our hospitals to manage diabetes is a genetically a genetic engineered. Yes. Uh, the, the treatment that was able to, fa to, to fail Ebola was genetically engineered. Uh, whatever we use for treatment of uh, COVID was genetically engineered. We are talking about Today, food. Kenya has, and we, I know that there is a fear of food, of food. seed sovereignty, food. Food. which I'm also very protective about. We don't want to lose our seed sovereignty. Hence the reason why we have institutions just, just such as ILRI, CALRO, etc., including the state-of-the-art plant transformation laboratory housed in Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. And that's why Herman Manyora, I will refer you to have conversations with people like Professor Duor, who have things. been producing seed even for our nearby countries, and the seed comes back some. into the country. Gladys so obviously, we are talking about, we, talking we about went to food. court mm. on, or without any empirical evidence. We are talking about so let's food. stop misleading yeah. Kenyans. Yeah. That's fine. And we are talking about caution. It's an ongoing conversation. We are talking about caution. Please, Herman. Something that makes 19 EU countries Yes. And you're say raising. no to GMO. They are protecting their seeds you've from raised that. You, say, you must be careful. Okay, Herman, you've been very <laughs> eloquent on that. Yes. Honorable they boss, are protecting honorable their boss, seeds I, I want us to close it. and I want to give you the final word because, again, last week um, there's a fake advocate that came about, Brian Munda, and, uh, of course, uh, the DPP <laughs> has given instructions that he 